a question that often comes up in, in dentistry if you have a bad tooth or a missing tooth is do you restore the tooth with a root canal or and crown? Do you extract the tooth and place an implant? Or if you have a missing tooth, do you replace it with an implant or a fixed bridge? Let's talk about a couple of cases here. It depends. This is how I view those situations. I do a lot of implants. I also do a lot of endodontics or root canals with crowns and I place a lot of fixed bridges. If a tooth is in the aesthetic zone, that means it's in the front of the mouth, in the upper part of the front of the mouth. If the patient has a low lip line when they smile, then you can do a fixed bridge or an implant. Probably gonna place an implant because the gingival line and the papilla don't show when the patient smiles. If the patient has a high lip line, meaning the gingival tissue, the gingival line shows when the patient smiles, then I personally prefer a fixed bridge because it's harder to control the gingival line and the papilla and even the dark shine through of the implant with an implant. I'm going to show you that in some cases here in a moment. Now there are other situations like this that you, your knee-jerk reaction would be to extract the tooth and place an implant. You've got bone loss. Here's the floor of the sinus right here though. And so you've only got about that much bone, which is about two millimeters of bone into which you could place an implant. So the only way you're gonna place an implant if you extract that tooth is by doing a sinus lift and bone graft, which means you fill part of the sinus with bone and you actually create bone for the implant. When this situation, this is an elderly gentleman, he has dementia, there's no way you're going to do a sinus lift and bone graft. And if you lose that molar tooth, you don't have any molar teeth to chew on. And so, and there's no tooth behind it to hook a bridge onto. This tooth also has bone loss, and so you really don't want to connect a bridge here. The thing this tooth has going for it is molar teeth have three roots, so it's like a three-legged stool. It's tripoded, so it's stable even if there is bone loss. So bottom line, in this case, you want to save the tooth if possible. Look at all this decay. So in a normal situation of a younger person, you would extract the tooth and place an implant. In this case, thoughtful dentistry is to save the tooth so the gentleman has something to chew on without having to wear a removable appliance. Because of his mental state of dementia, I, I don't really think a removable appliance was in the cards. So what I did in this situation was endodontics on the tooth, remove the decay, place composite filling in the decayed area, and placed an onlay, and that worked out nicely. The tooth is not mobile, and he will probably have that tooth for the rest of his life. So it's, I call this thoughtful dentistry. You've got to take the circumstances of the patient into consideration. Here's another case. You can see when this patient smiles, he has a low lip line, which means he does not show the gingival uh, line or the papilla when he smiles. Now we did other things on this patient. We actually did sinus lifts and bone grafts and place implants in the posterior teeth. I'm not showing that in this instance. So we extracted that tooth and an implant was appropriate here. So we placed an implant with a crown, but you can see what I'm talking about when you place an implant in the aesthetic zone, you don't have perfect control of the gingival line of, or the papilla. You can see how the gingival line on this implant is a little bit higher than the gingival line on this natural tooth. If that doesn't come into play, if the patient has a low lip line, then an implant may be the restoration of choice in the aesthetic zone. In the aesthetic zone, remember, is normally just the maxillary anterior teeth may be extending back to the bicuspids. So this tooth was extracted because of periodontal issues and an implant placed. So you can see when he smiles his biggest smile, you don't see the gingival line or the papilla, so that doesn't come into play in your uh, treatment plan. 
that you could go with either a bridge or an implant. Generally, an implant is easier to maintain than a, than a fixed bridge, but I place a lot of fixed bridges in the aesthetic zone. I'm going to go over that later in this video. As you can see, when he smiles his largest smile, he doesn't show the papilla or the gingival line, so an implant in the aesthetic zone is an appropriate restoration. Now, what about this individual? She's ultra health conscious. I'm not saying that's good or bad, but there's many dental restorations that she doesn't feel are appropriate. She's afraid there could be de some detrimental uh, side to endodontics, to root canals, and there's some people that feel that way. They think if you do a root canal on an upper cuspid, it's going to affect the liver. If you do a root canal on an a lower molar, that's going to affect the heart. If you do a root canal on an upper second molar, that's going to affect the kidney. There's no science behind it, but, and there's really no way that that individual tooth is going to affect a certain organ because they're all affected to the same blood supply and the same lymph system. So this tooth is not going to go just to the kidney. They all go everywhere. And if you perform endodontics with gutta percha, you clean the canals out really well and irrigate them and then place gutta percha in the, in the cleaned out canal, it's inert. And so you could actually place the gutta percha in the bone and there would be no reaction. If a tooth was responding to something like a root canal, then you get granulation tissue around the tooth and you can see it on a radiograph. It's infection, infective material. And a well done root canal on a radiograph or in the mouth looks just like a tooth uh, that's natural, that's had nothing done to it. So I have a hard time extracting a tooth. In this person's case, she had a hypersensitive tooth right here, this first molar, and she wanted me to extract it. Well, for some reason, she didn't have any problem with titanium implants. Now, bone loves titanium, and it responds the same way to a titanium implant normally that it responds to an endodontic procedure. Now, you can always find somebody that's had a failed implant or a failed root canal. I mean, it just happens. About 10% or less of both of those are going to fail. I often say to patients, the only thing you can guarantee in life that will last a lifetime is a flint rock and a shot put. But endodontics and implants are two of the most predictable procedures in dentistry. If you think of medical procedures, there's not a 100% guarantee on anything, but a, a root canal endodontics is very predictable in my opinion, very safe. I've had probably five root canals in my life just from sports injuries and mountain bike injuries and cracked teeth and what have you. So anyway, this was the tooth and it was very savable, And but she wanted to extract the tooth and place an implant. And I said, oh, I just can't do that because if every time for the rest of your life, she was in her 30s, you have a a tooth issue, either hyperemia or an abscess tooth or what have you, if we extract it, you're going to run out of teeth and have to have a lot more dentistry done than if you just did the endodontics and the crown. So anyway, I ended up not treating this patient. It was interesting, even being such a healthy person, she ate a lot of sticky sweets. You can see we've got decay here and decay here. And I just, I really just didn't want to get into it because it just didn't make sense to me to take that perfectly good tooth out and place an implant when you could have saved it with a well-done root canal and crown. Now, there's a type of, of root canal called the Sargini technique that somebody invented, and you actually place formaldehyde, a formaldehyde paste in the tooth once you've performed the endodontics. Well, that really doesn't make sense, and a lot of those failed and so it gave root canals a bad name but if a two root canal is well done cleaned out filed well irrigated well and filled with gutta percha which is inert and a sealer then they have a very good long-term prognosis okay now here's another case of this gentleman had an old bridge and he was having pain with this tooth right here and this uh, retainer was loose 
This one was still affixed to the tooth, but this had come loose. So this is the old bridge from here to here, and then the old bridge from here to here, and this one was mobile. Now how do you tell if it's mobile? Well, you press it to place, and then you just squeeze it with your fingers, and if you've got some water around it, it'll move, and you'll see air bubbles at the margin of the crown. So you push the bridge to place, and if the person, th the patient thinks it's mobile, put a little water or saliva around the margin of the crown and squeeze it up with your fingers. And if it moves, you'll see an air bubble at the margin. So when I remove the bridge, unfortunately, if you have one retainer, one crown on a bridge that's loose, you don't ever want to tap that bridge off because this tooth may not be too strong the other uh, abutment tooth and you could fracture this tooth off at the gum line. So you want to cut the bridge off, remove the bridge by cutting it off and taking it off in a couple of pieces so you don't take a chance on fracturing this tooth. You can see all the decay here and so I performed endodontics, a root canal on this tooth. Well now you've got a root canal tooth and a bicuspid tooth and it was decided that we'd place an implant here because then you'd have three teeth, it's easier to maintain, and you don't have the bridge supported by a single rooted tooth and a tooth that's had endodontics. So here's the endodontics on the second molar, the implant placed here, and then a single crown on this bicuspid tooth. This, there was plenty of bone here. You see I've just engaged the floor of the sinus with the implant. So this is a lot easier to maintain than a bridge because you've got a floss under t underneath it. You have a little food uh, collecting underneath there. This is, is easier if it's a appropriate restorative situation. So here's before and after crown, implant abutment and crown, and single crown. So this is another case. This tooth had abscessed. And so I had initially placed a couple of crowns here and done endodontics. This mesial root had failed. They were very sclerotic canals, and I had performed an apicoectomy. Now, this is something I had done on the tooth. I have some failures just like you do. Uh, you can't control Mother Nature. Sometimes the anatomy of the tooth or something else affects it. So anyway, this tooth had failed, and there wasn't enough room from the alveolar crest or the top of the bone to the floor of the sinus to place an implant without a sinus lift and bone graft. So after I'd placed these two crowns, this tooth and done endodontics on these two teeth, this tooth failed. So I extracted that tooth. You can see there wasn't enough bone here for an implant without a sinus lift and bone graft. See how this root extends way up into the sinus. So this is after the bone graft and this is after uh, the extraction and bone graft have healed for six months. And I had a provisional crown on here, a bridge on here for that healing time. And then this is the final fixed bridge. So that was appropriate for that patient's temperament and circumstances. She really didn't want to go through a sinus lift and bone graft, and I understood that, and a bridge, a fixed bridge worked well here. There is the final restoration with the fixed bridge and the graft. You can see here's the floor of the sinus. So in this situation, endodontics was and a post was performed on this tooth about 45 years ago, and the tooth had had an apicoectomy because of a fracture in trying to uh, to save the tooth. You can see, though, that there's a little radiolucency right here, which means this tooth is probably fractured at the base of this post that was placed when this individual was about 17 years old. It was from a baseball accident. The issue with a root canal is over time, over many years, the teeth become brittle like a dead tree. The positive of a root canal is you don't have to go through a surgical extraction and an implant, and if the tooth fails, you can always go to an implant. So this individual got uh, about 50 years out of this root canal post and crown, but now it was failing because it had become brittle uh, toward the end of the time, and after he'd had the endodontics post and crown for about 50 years, Apparently the tooth fractured and we tried saving it with an apicoectomy and it's, we realized this was the issue right here. And so the tooth was extracted, an implant placed, 
and crown. So the way I look at this is it's kind of like you jump out of an airplane and you've got two parachutes. The first parachute is the endodontics and crown. And if you have, if you perform endodontics and crown or maybe even a post on a tooth, then you're going to get X amount of life. You may get a whole lifetime out of that, but if it ever failed, you can always go to the implant. So in this case, this woman had had some bridges placed. She's congenitally missing her lateral incisors, and so she had had some bridges placed, and you can see the artificial teeth, the missing teeth look artificial. There was no gingival pontic site developed. These are the original bridges. You can see how the the missing teeth on the bridges look artificial. Now, why do they call it a bridge? It's because it connects to the teeth on either side. So they're like the land and the missing teeth are like the water. So it's like a bridge over water. So she was unhappy with these bridges that were placed in another dental office. So I removed the existing bridges and you can see how this tissue is flat. So to create a bridge that looks like it is a natural tooth, like it grew out of the tissue, you've got to create a gingival pontic receptor site. I've got another video on fixed bridges that goes through that. So I've created these gingival pontic receptor sites, which are like little foxholes in the, in the tissue. So the fake tooth called the pontic fits into that little foxhole and it looks like it grew out of the tissue. When you place a bridge, you always want the tissue in the edentulous area, the missing tooth area, to blanch when you push the bridge to place. This is trying it in. You can see how that tissue is blanching, which means the pontic is in intimate contact with that tissue. And that makes it look natural and it keeps the patient from collecting food debris under the under the pontic. So these are the new bridges from here to here, here to here. See, we've created these gingival pontic receptor sites so it looks like the lateral incisors grew out of the tissue just like the crowns on the teeth. So these are the missing teeth before and after. So the patients had these for a long time. They hold up well. They're an excellent restoration, especially if you're the person is missing teeth in the aesthetic zone. You can see she has a high lip line. The gingival line and the pontic show. So I personally prefer a fixed bridge in these situations because there are many things that can cause an aesthetic issue with an implant. The gingival line, the pontic, and the implant can shine through. Now there are zirconium implants, but they're kind of in the experimental stage, and zirconium pontics for the implant, but they're not as as studied as the titanium implant, so you'd normally rather place a titanium implant if you're placing one. Bone loves titanium. They're inert. The body does not respond negative to, negatively to it and it's got years of study. So if we're placing, replacing a tooth in the aesthetic zone, which is from about here to here in the maxillary or the upper arch, I often prefer a fixed bridge to an implant unless the patient has a low lip line when they smile, which means they don't show the gingival line or the papilla. Here's another case of this young lady had some bad crowns placed on the teeth and she was going to lose, I think, this, this tooth. You can see she had an old post and core and a granulation tissue or granuloma at the apex of the tooth. This is what a tooth looks like on an x-ray if it's failing, if it's having a reaction to something going on in the tooth. Oftentimes it's a fracture. If a tooth has a well done root canal and even a post and everything is, is the way it should be, this tooth on a radiograph looks just like a normal tooth. So we knew we were gonna have to extract that tooth and since she has a high lip line and it's in the aesthetic zone, I placed a fixed bridge from here to here. This is the, this is the bridge right here. This is the false tooth, and you can see how it's hard to tell that it's not a natural tooth because I created that gingival pontic receptor site, and then we placed veneers on the adjacent teeth so we could lighten the shade of the final restoration. If I placed 
just a bridge from here to here and didn't restore the adjacent teeth, then I would have had to match the shade of her teeth, which was not terrible, but she's a beautiful young woman and wanted a lighter shade. So to do that, we placed veneers on these adjacent teeth. You can see how this is an intimate, con this false tooth is in intimate contact with the tissue so the patient doesn't collect food underneath it. Now if you have a bridge, it's very important that you rinse with mouthwash and floss it with super floss every night. Super floss is a floss that has a yarn on it and you go underneath the bridge, it's easy to do, and you floss this part to be sure you don't have any microscopic particles of food collecting underneath there. So this is the bridge and the veneers on this young woman. And you can see she has a high lip line. So I didn't want to place it, replace the tooth with an implant. A fixed bridge was appropriate, in my opinion, in this case, because of the high lip line. If she'd had a low lip line, meaning she didn't show the gingival line or the papilla when she smiled, then we might have considered an implant. And here's another case. This woman was missing a lot of teeth, all of her posterior teeth except for this bicuspid and didn't like the way the upper anterior teeth looked either. So we're missing all these posterior teeth back here. So a bridge is not a possibility in this case because we don't have any posterior teeth distal or behind the missing space to hook a bridge onto. If you've only got teeth in the front or the back of the edentulous or missing tooth space, you can't place a fixed bridge because remember, as I talked about a while ago, a fixed bridge, in a fixed bridge, the teeth on either side are like the land and the missing teeth space is like the water. So the bridge goes from land to land and co goes across the water. So we don't have any land or teeth behind the missing space to put a bridge onto. So in this case, if she does not want a removable partial, her only option are implants. And so in this case, we had to do sinus lift and bone grafting to create bone in the sinus for the implants. So this is preoperatively, you can see the sinus, the floor of the sinus is almost down to the alveolar crest. Typically I like five millimeters of the patient's natural bone before I'll even do a sinus lift and bone graft. In this case she was just adamant about not having a, a removable appliance. She'd had these bad teeth her whole life and removable appliances her whole life and she wanted fixed restorations. And so we did the sinus lift. See the sinus floor is way down here so you're going to have to graft up to here. And when you graft it, I like to leave the graft in place for six months before you impress the implants. So the, you can see the bone graft here and the bone graft here and place the implants here. The shortest implant is eight millimeters. There are some that are six that are real wide but typically the shortest implant is eight millimeters and you want that most of that eight millimeters in bone. If you've got a couple of millimeters in the sinus, that's not the end of the world. But you, you want most of it, at least six millimeters of it in bone. So we've done the sinus lifts and bone graft and replaced those teeth, these three and these two, then veneered the rest of the teeth. These are the restored teeth with sinus lifts and bone graft. So that's kind of an overview of what do you do if you've got a bad tooth, or missing teeth, tooth or teeth, and you've got the options of root canals and crowns, or an implant if it's a single tooth, or you could place a removable appliance. Most people would rather have a fixed restoration than a removable appliance. So if it's gonna be, we're just talking about fixed restorations. It doesn't come in and out. So if you want something that doesn't come in and out and you've got a single bad tooth, your option is either a root canal and a crown or extract the tooth and an implant. I would much rather have a root canal and a crown than an implant just because it's a, not such a big procedure and you don't have to go through a surgical procedure and the healing and of the bone graft and all that. And ha I'd rather have the root canal and the crown if it could be done. Now, if, you, if you've got 
a missing tooth in the aesthetic zone, then you've got a choice of an implant or a fixed bridge. If the patient has a high lip line, that means they show the gingival line and the papilla when they smile, then my preference is a fixed bridge because it's very difficult to control the gingival line and the papilla with an implant. You want symmetry in the front. You don't want this tooth, gingival line, and papilla to be different or much different than the adjacent tooth. So that's an overview of endodontics or root canals with crowns versus implants versus fixed bridges. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. I know you want to take your practice to the top tier. Subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com for an organized library of all the dental minute videos plus many complete comprehensive cases and so many important articles that you can only find right here. New cases are added weekly, only $20 a month.